Well, guys, here it is. The long-awaited results of uh, Hamfest number two. <laughs> Didn't work out the way I thought it was going to. Uh, you know, I went there to try and unload some stuff that I didn't want any longer. Uh, projects I weren't going to get to or just, you know, excess inventory. And uh, what ended up happening was the weather was really bad that day. And they decided not to cancel the ham fest or even postpone it, probably because they had rented the hall for that particular Saturday. So they couldn't just wait a day and have it on Sunday, I guess. Long story short, there weren't a lot of people there as far as uh, buyers. So the traffic was really light. And that led to me not being able to unload much stuff. I did get rid of a few things. This is not the radio that I showed in part two. This is not the uh, DX, uh, I forgot what model it was that I had, but I get to the show and I find this fairly clean looking DX120. I think I had a DX160 with the external speaker. And I ended up selling that radio. Even though there weren't a lot of people there, I was able to sell that radio. Somebody fell in love with it. And before I sold that radio, Early in the morning when I was setting up, I was walking around and I saw this DX120. And I was like, well, that's going to be competition a little bit for my radio. So I better get rid of it. <laughs> I better make that go away. So I picked this up for 20 bucks and uh, brought it over to my table and sat it behind the table to take home. Because uh, I know it's, I think it's got some issues. So we'll have to take a look at it, see if it's worth messing around with. So this is a DX120. I I don't see an external speaker jack, and it looks like there's a speaker built into it right here. There's a grill right here on the side, so not quite as nice a model as my other one, but hey, you know, 20 bucks, why not? So I've got it plugged in here on the bench. Let's just see uh, whether or not anything happens when I turn it on. All right, I get a uh, dial light, but it doesn't sound like anything else is going on. And of course, this is a uh, solid state, no tubes, so there really shouldn't be any delay. So that's max volume there and nothing's happening. All right, let's come back to that radio. Let me show you the other things I bought. So I'd say the best deal that I scooped there was uh, this unit end model 8500XLT scanner. Um, I'm running a uh, the scanner I have here in the shop that I use right now is a Bearcat Pro 2050. Uh, so this is quite an upgrade from that, I believe. It's interesting to me, the uh, the 2050 says right on it that it's a trunk tracker. I don't see that on this radio. But I picked this up for the whopping sum of 20 bucks, And the guy even had the original manual to go with it. The only thing it didn't have was the original power supply. He actually had a Samsung laptop power supply that he was using to run this that he gave me with the radio. I checked the rating on it. It's uh, it's the right voltage and it's more than enough uh, current so it should run this perfectly fine without damaging it. So I'm seeing a lot of Boston stations pre-programmed into here. Yeah, so I think I said uh, unit end before, but uh, what I meant to say was that my old, uh, my current scanner here I use in the shop is this Radio Shack model Pro 2050, 800 megahertz trunk tracker. So this is, has, it's an analog radio, but it has trunk tracker technology. I just figured out the reason why I don't see anything like that on this radio is, turns out this radio is quite a bit older. So you can see why I got excited about it. I like, you know, the the jog shuttle knob and it seemed like it had a lot of, a lot of features and it's a good size base radio. Sounds like with a number like 8500 XLT it would be quite pretty good, which I guess when it first came out maybe it was a big deal. It has now been determined that apparently this radio is somewhat of a dog on reception as far as sensitivity goes. And the bigger problem is it's an old radio. According to the date code on the back, this radio appears to be a 1993. Not that this is any spring chicken. This radio, according to the date code, the date code's right here, 5A8. 
The first number represents the month of manufacture, so that would be May. The A means nothing, according to what I've read here online. And then the 8 would be the last digit in the year. So 8 would indicate that it's either 1998 or 2008. But another site I found said that this radio started production in 2000. So is it a 2008 and that this radio was in production for eight years? Probably not. This is probably a 1998. Here's something I've never seen a scanner be able to do. I don't want to get a, a copyright strike, so I'll turn that right down. But uh, this thing will allow you to directly enter FM radio broadcast frequencies. So instead of blocking out that section, like a, like my other my Radio Shack Pro model, if I try and put in a a radio station, it'll um, it'll just give me an error. So well, that's kind of neat. But yeah, I guess I'm gonna probably let this one go down the road. I can't even find a value on this thing. I think it's so old that, you know, they just don't really pop up on eBay enough to, to get values on. The, uh, the Radio Shack Pro 2050 there that I was just showing you guys, that radio, right over here again, this radio, um, these in good working order still trade for around 25 to 35 bucks, I'd say, roughly around there on eBay. Well, well, let's see if we can't see what's wrong with this thing real quick. Well, hold the phone. There's a switch on here, AC-DC. So this has got a uh, plug right here, so you can run this off a 12-volt DC. Huh. Could it be that simple? That it just needed to be switched to AC? Ah. Uh -huh. Boy, that is one dirty volume control. Oh, let's clean these controls real quick. All right, let's see. Let's see if this helps. There's no antenna on here yet. Alright, so that's the uh, AM broadcast band. Let's see if we can't get any shortwave. Single strength meters mark working. E que a rua do tu plano de Satanás? Absolutamente não. E uma vez que o tabu é quebrado, como ter mais de uma esposa, ele é rapidamente aceito pelos outros. O que o versículo se. Como disse? So band A was the uh, AM broadcast band. Band B is uh, 1.55 to 4.5 megahertz. That's working. Band C is 4.5 to 13 megahertz. That also is working. Band D sounds pretty dead, but that is the that's the 13 to 30 megahertz band. Um, I don't think I'm going to get anything off of this without a much better antenna than a piece of wire. 
at least not down here in my basement. So this model is known as the realistic DX120 Star Patrol. It actually says right here, Star Patrol. This was made in Japan, and it was only made for two years, 1970 and 1971. So they probably didn't have a lot of high production numbers on this model. But anyways, it, it you know, it's a nice clean radio. I mean, it looked like it was well cared for uh, considering, what's that? Uh, if it's a 1970 and makes this thing 54 years old. I noticed when I was wiggling the band selector, I thought I heard something on that uh, HF band. So I cleaned it again and sure enough, I just caught some skip. Got, got one of these guys with those big linear amplifiers running and he keeps busting through every once in a while. Let's give it a second. Yeah, label man, I didn't hear him back there, buddy. I heard somebody said they was all one white, wanted to get their name Yeah, yeah, I guarantee you, this guy's not running one watt. He's probably want, running one kilowatt. Yeah, that's what he said, the old one watt. I said, damn, that's pretty damn good being on this. <laughs> so anyways, this this is a working receiver. That's no antenna on there, by the way, other than just the uh, piece of wire that I had on there before. I was going to try and hook up my HF antenna, but the heck with it. I'm satisfied. I'm, I'm going to button this up, put the screws back in it, and... Uh, Oh, I guess we'll put this on Marketplace because I, I I got so many short wave uh, radio receivers. I got a nice one coming up. I'll be featuring probably in a month or so. But for now, I guess we're going to call this one a wrap. So I hope you enjoyed these videos. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. Take care. Well, there you go. I don't think I could have said it better myself.